Namaste. So today, I want to share with you a miracle. And this is the miracle called Shiro Vrata. A Vrata means a vow, a promise, especially a promise to do a certain kind of worship or sadhana. For example, chanting a mantra or abstaining from non-vegetarian food. We talked about last time. That's a vrata. And shiro, shiro means fire. So this is the fire bath, which is also, also called tripundra, basma, or vibhuti. And you can see it, I'm wearing it on my forehead and all over my body, actually. So a lot of people, of course, are going to run into cultural conditioning that tells them that it shouldn't be doing this. Huh? Oh, I can't do that. I can't put that stuff on my forehead. Huh? I can't put a big dot. <laughs> of course you can, silly. You have religious freedom in your country, but you don't have social freedom, do you? Well, in any case, you can put it on surreptitiously or at home or use a very dilute solution of the ashes. And you can put it on somehow or other if you really want to. So then my job is to get you to really want to. <laughs> because the benefits are nothing short of miraculous. And that's why I'm calling this the miracle of Shirovrata. So, what is vibhuti or bhasma? Huh? What is this fire bath, shirovratta? We have to understand what is fire, really. Fire is an element in Vedic philosophy, or really it's a state of matter. It's plasma. You know, the flame of the fire, the reason it glows is because you have highly energetic ions stripped of their electrons in a chemical reaction that liberates a great deal of heat. So this chemical reaction ionizes the atoms and they become a plasma. It's an interesting experiment to take a magnet and put it next to a flame like a candle flame. Try it, see what happens. The flame bends it's attracted by the magnet or electrical field, the same thing. So these charged particles, these ions, are the uh, fourth state of matter. After solid, liquid, gas, then plasma, more subtle even than gas. So when a material is put through a very hot fire, it becomes purified. For example, if you want to purify gold, you put it in a crucible and put it in a very hot fire. And in the same way, if you take something that's already pure, like cow dung from grass-fed, free-range cows, huh? not your typical industrial beef cattle, forget that, but real cows, cows that are like family members that are kept as pets, my neighbor next door, he has several cows. Oh, he treats those cows just like his kids. <laughs> they love him, you know. And uh, when he milks them, they're always like, he always brings the calf over and so they can lick their calf while he milks them. He knows exactly cow psychology. <laughs> so anyway, you take the cow dung from that kind of cow, a cow that's in good health, good psychological and spiritual health. Because these cows live right across from a temple 
They're always hearing the ceremonies, the mantras and the bells at the temple, you know. So they're really happy cows. Now you take this cow dung and you burn it in an airtight container in very, very hot fire, like white hot, you know, with a, with a, a blower or a bellows to make it burn really, really hot. And then you chant, as this is going on, you chant certain mantras. We'll get into those mantras later on in another video. I'll show you how to do all this. The result, the ash, perfectly pure white ash, is called bhasma. And when it's made with according to the proper mantras, it's called vibhuti. So vibhuti is very, very pure. It's double, triple pure, huh? because it starts with something pure, cow dung. Oh, I've done a lot of research on cow dung. One time I took some fresh cow dung and I, and I dried it and kept it in a bacteria-free environment, sterile environment. And then I put tiny grains of it in a Petri dishes and I cultured it and I analyzed what, what was cultured as a result. And it was completely non-toxic bacteria and fungi. Huh? Absolutely nothing harmful. You know, the, the most uh, kind of gross thing that came out <laughs> were these little mushrooms. Huh? The kind of little mushrooms that you see after a rain in your lawn, if you fertilize it with cow dung. <laughs> anyway, nothing harmful, nothing toxic. There's nothing bad at all about cow dung and nothing bad can live in cow dung. So then when you put it in the fire, it gets more pure. And when you chant mantras over it, as it's going through this plasma bath, it gets even more pure. So it's triple pure and it's very purifying. So I didn't know about this really until about two years ago. And I did... Uh, I think I did one or two videos on it. Here's a link. And I thought, you know, that was it. That's all there is to know about it, right? No. <laughs> As it turns out, in the Srimad Devi Bhagavatam, there are five chapters, five whole chapters devoted to the glories of Bhasma, Vibhuti, and the Tripundra. And the Shiro Vrata, the vow of putting it on your body every day. So I'm going to read some excerpts from these chapters. That's what this series is going to be about, mainly. And, of course, giving the mantras and other procedures. You will also come to understand how wonderful this stuff is. The chapter begins with Lord Narayan answering questions by Narada Muni. And Narada Muni asks, what is the significance of this Tripundra, these three lines worn by the devotees? And Narayan answers him. He says, the Brahmanas who perform duly the Shirovrata, the vow to apply ashes on the forehead as described below, are the only ones who can attain very easily the highest knowledge, destroying all avidya, ignorance. So he goes on to say that this is so powerful that even they don't have to follow the rules and regulations of right conduct in the scriptures. And this is a very big deal because the rules and regulations are the essence of karma yoga. And they lead to the development of bhakti. But what, what Narayan is saying that someone who follows this one vrata, shiro vrata, putting ashes on the forehead only, is excused from all those rules. Now the funny thing about it is if you become pure, you'll follow these rules automatically. <laughs> but you don't have to. And that's a very different kind of mood from the scriptures. And he goes on, O learned one, it is through this Shirovrata that Brahma and the other Devatas 
have been able to get their Brahmahood and Devahood. The ancient sages glorified highly this Shirovrata. Brahma, Vishnu, Rudra, and the other Devas all performed this Shirovrata. So this is how you become a god. I don't know of any other place in the scriptures, and believe me, I've read a bunch of scriptures in my life, uh, probably 10,000 volumes or more uh, of Vedic scriptures and Buddhist scriptures as well. And in no other scripture is it given how to become a denizen of the heavenly planets exactly. Huh? How to become a demigod, how to become a Brahma, Vishnu, or Rudra. This is extraordinary. So in this scripture, this Devi Bhagavatam is given many, many stories from the ancient past that describe why the, the uh, scriptures give certain rules and regulations and how they developed and what the specific results are. So the specific results of putting Tripundra on the forehead are that you can become a Brahma, Vishnu, or Rudra. This is huge. You won't find this anywhere else in any other scripture, I promise. So, let's go on. He continues, Those that perform duly this Shirovrata become sinless, though they were sinful in every way. The Shirovrata is not something made up in the recent past. It's mentioned in the Atarva Veda. Atarva Veda is very, very old. More than 5,000, more than 10,000. Who knows how old it is? It's very ancient. Huh? But the Shirovrata is mentioned there. And all the rules of how to prepare Basma and Tripundra. So this is not something that somebody just made up, you know, in some modern sect. And of course, it's mentioned in many, many scriptures, but nowhere have I seen as detailed a description as in Devi Bhagavatam. So he mentions something very, very important here, that even if somebody is very sinful, by performance of this vow, they become sinless. And as a nice saying, the owner of my house told me this saying. He says, every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. This is a wonderful viewpoint. In other words, no one is irrevocably bound by sin. And no one who is virtuous was always that way. We all have a past and we all have a future. And if we follow the principles of sadhana, if we study the scriptures and accept a guru and perform different sacrifices and vratas, then all these sins can be turned into spiritual advancement. And that's the power of sadhana. We should always have hope and faith in the power of sadhana to erase sins, to destroy bad karma, and to uh, make the subha karma or the good karma that brings us to higher and higher births. So I want to make just one more reading. I mean, this just goes on for five chapters. <laughs> Pasupata Vrata, Shiva Vrata, etc. are different names assigned to it. In all the Sakhas, in all the scriptures, the one substance, intelligence solidified, named Shiva, and the knowledge thereof is mentioned. This is Shirovrata. Shirovrata is the path to reach Shiva. You know, there's that wonderful prayer by Shankaracharya where the refrain is Shivo Hum, Shivo Hum, Shivo Hum. He's in the state of Shiva. What does that mean? Pure, auspicious, 
godly. And the controller, Ishana, Ishwara. So by this process, simply putting these purified and purifying substances on the body, one can eradicate sin and reach the highest potential of being. It's like pure fire. It burns to ashes all the sins of this earthly life. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.